So all in all, I mean, it was a, a good experience. It's good for me to be able to share this with people um, so that I can at least put some put some people at ease that one, you can get out of an airplane at relatively low altitude if, you're, if you've practiced for it, trained for it, and visualized for it. Two, that getting out of the airplane wasn't really a big deal. It, it's not uncomfortable. It didn't feel scary. It was a very natural feeling. Three, when you pull the parachute, uh, it opens very quickly. It's very relieving. And when it does, there's, there's nothing violent or, or painful about it. As long as you have your chute strapped on correctly, it was fine. Um, and uh, the descent is under uh, different circumstances would be gentle and kind of soothing. So uh, all those things might put people at ease a, a little bit about uh, about having to leave their airplane if they if they have to. That, uh, those things aren't, aren't something to really shouldn't affect their decision to leave the airplane. The model of biplane that I had to to egress from uh, this year in April was a. 10-200 Ultimate Biplane is a home-built design uh, that was designed by a guy named Gordon Price out of Canada in the 80s. Uh, I owned a seat pack shoe with a 26-foot round cannon. The reason I had to egress from my airplane in, in April was due to the fact that I had a hub failure on the front of my propeller and uh, it had caused one blade to be thrown from the hub, which within probably a rotation of the of the engine caused the whole engine to be tore off from the firewall and uh, the whole firewall part of the airplane was removed in about half a second. The weather on the day that I wound up uh, jumping out of my airplane was was nice 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 weather. Uh, it was all VFR conditions. I was going up for a practice flight shortly after I'd gotten back from an air show in Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida and I usually after a long cross-country flight from an air show like that I usually go up uh, either a couple thousand feet or a thousand feet higher than what I would normally just practice. I'm not going to practice a surface level routine after that kind of, of a trip just because I like to shake the airplane out, make sure everything's uh, made it back from the long trip okay. So the weather was probably about 15 knots of wind uh, from the northwest and uh, ceilings were probably 10,000 feet. It was a beautiful clear blue day. I had done, a, done my regular run up and uh, departed climbed out to probably about 15 to 1800 feet before I started to just maneuver the airplane and from the time that uh, I departed the runway to the time that I departed the airplane was probably about six minutes. I was on a downline at about 190 miles an hour roughly around between 15 and 1800 feet. Um, there was no real indication everything was fine, no vibrations, no nothing. Um, and then instantly it felt like I, I had hit something in the air. Uh, basically I went from about 190 miles an hour to what felt like the airplane had come to a stop. And I didn't know the reason, I didn't know uh, what, had, what had happened. I thought the airplane, I knew the airplane had catastrophically broken, but I didn't know what part did. Uh, a lot of, some pieces came through the canopy which broke the glass out of the canopy. And, uh, it instantly put me into my egress mode, um, so there was nothing, nothing leading up, nothing leading up to the failure. It was completely everything was absolutely normal in one second, and in the next second, the airplane wasn't moving anymore. Um, there was a lot of wind noise in the cockpit because the canopy was broken, and I, and I knew I had to egress from the airplane. The series of events that led to my decision to get out of the airplane happened very quickly, probably within a matter of a couple of seconds. Um, due to the fact that the failure of the airplane was so catastrophic and there was instant loss of control, um, where the controls didn't, didn't have input on the airplane, I didn't waste more than a couple seconds really trying to work with them. Um, again, the canopy was broken and uh, the airplane, the engine obviously wasn't running, but it was more because it was no longer attached to the airplane um, and I could see that instantly that most of the firewall and the cowling was missing from the airplane. So the decision to get out was very easy. Um, for those people wondering whether or not they could get out of an airplane, it's, it's important to realize that when an airplane is broken that badly that any place looks, any place looks better to be than inside the airplane. So that could uh, take that for what it's worth, but it might be a little comforting. Uh, I had gone to a seminar at the uh, International Council of Air Shows conducted by Alan Silver. 
another note to pilots that wonder, you know, what's it like to jump out of an airplane if you haven't gone skydiving? Again, I've never jumped out of an airplane. I've never done any skydiving. The experience of actually leaving the airplane wasn't scary at all. It was strangely comfortable. It doesn't feel like you're falling. It just, uh, you're just separate from the airplane. Um, again, not, not, really, not really uncomfortable whatsoever. Uh, see the deer ring pull it when the chute unfurls and it pulls. Uh, it's super comforting feeling. Uh, instantly you know whatever happens from here on out I'll, I'll be okay whether or not you're aware <laughs> whatever you're gonna land on or whatever at least uh, the worst is over I never saw the airplane I think it was probably in the ground at that time by the time the chute probably opened so I never did see the airplane impact the ground but the chute deployed um, like I say probably around 700 feet my parachute ride was if I you know just as pulling off from my memory it might have been three seconds two or three seconds it was a very short ride um, when I looked down, I knew my chances of making it to the ground were pretty much slim to none on account that there were power lines and, and trees. I reached up and, uh, and, and grabbed a hold of the rings. I was only able to just rotate the, my direction. I didn't really, I didn't really change my direction. Uh, again, made no difference. I was going into the trees regardless, uh, which my descent into the tree was, was super soft. The, it, it probably only broke through five or six feet worth of limbs before it got securely hung and about a 60-foot popple tree. Uh, no issue again, no injuries, uh, quite, quite gentle. Uh, and then I, I, I swung there for probably only about two minutes before some people had, had heard the airplane break and they followed you know, the trajectory of myself and the airplane and uh, they, they found me on the side of the, you know, probably only a couple hundred feet off on the side of the road hanging in the tree. Uh, you know, a second before I was into the trees, I was real, realizing what had just happened, you know. Um, and it made me realize while well, I was hanging in the tree for about a half an hour waiting for the fire truck to come and get me down, how systematic that uh, the whole episode was, how the airplane broke, I instantly went into egress mode, pushed myself free of the airplane, pulled my parachute, and you know, three seconds later was hanging fine in a tree with an airplane that had impacted the ground with devastating force just a quarter mile away.